everybody, welcome to this new video series and in this series I'm going to be sharing with you my journey into learning more about development from a designer's perspective. So before we get started on the computer I want to take a few minutes to tell you about my idea and concept behind this video series and also a bit about my experience uh, on the development side of things already. As you already know primarily I am a designer however I've always had an interest in code and I have some experience with code just sort of HTML and CSS and very very basic sort of like implementation of JavaScript however I want to take that to the next level to improve my sort of employability and also you know to just expand my knowledge and skill in the kind of digital design and development kind of field and my idea behind this video series was to share with you um, in a kind of vlog format how I'm approaching different tasks and different things to help me improve my uh, development experience. So it's not going to be strictly a tutorial style video however there will be parts where I will be telling you a bit about my experience as a developer in the past and what I know so far and the things I've learned to do and of course in those kind of videos you are more than welcome to follow along if you wish. However it's more going to be a documentation of my learning and, and growth as a developer. In this first video we're going to be taking a website and using Webflow as a prototyping tool, exporting the code and then putting that up onto uh, GitHub pages, which will cover quite a few different basic uh, elements uh, of web development, um, which I already know, um, but I thought it would be good to share with you the very basics, and then as it gets more complex, it will become more like a vlog style video. But yeah, let's get started on the computer now. So before we get started doing anything in particular, I first wanna show you guys what we're gonna achieve in this first episode. Like I said, the first few episodes are gonna be me sharing my experience on the development side of things. And basically, what I know how to do so far is code a very basic website and in HTML, CSS with some little bits of JavaScript and then upload it to a server. I actually also know quite a lot about JavaScript task runners such as Grunt and I've also been playing around in the last few days with something called Browser Browserify, which is a way to manage your uh, dependencies. Um, so I do know a bit on the front end side of things, um, enough to make a well-optimized website and put it up online. But we're going to start from the very basics in this very first episode. And when I'm showing you what I know so far, it's going to be more kind of like a tutorial style, and then it's going to switch later on in maybe episode three or four to a more vlog style. But without further ado, this is what we're going to be creating in this episode today and it's basically so far just a very very basic this is literally just one page and the page we're going to create which you guys can visit right now um, but actually I'm going to take it down so we can start everything from the beginning but it's just going to be a page where I can house basically a portfolio for my development work I already have my regular portfolio which is kieranglover.com but this is my uh, github page and the way we're going to build this is we're going to start in webflow which I have here and we're going to start a new project and then we're going to export the code and then we're going to show you what the code looks like the exported webflow code and then we're going to upload it to github pages and then in the later episodes we'll get into more optimizations to make the website super speedy because this website at the moment is optimized and loads in about two milliseconds which is really super quick so yep let's get started into webflow now and start building out this framework of the site As you can see in the screen capture I just made, you've seen that I've just been working on the very, very basic layout for the uh, new kind of portfolio-ish thing that I'm making uh, ready to export and then upload up to export the code and then upload it to GitHub Pages. And I'm just a bit stuck because I want to include something uh, recording the videos, like a carousel for the videos or something like that. So I'm just gonna take a step back from the computer and, and sketch out a few videos um, in my notebook to try and work on how, how that's gonna look. Because I want two more sections, one for the videos and one for my current focus, like my current learning focus, and what tools I'm learning and stuff like that. And then that should be enough to export the code. But I'm just gonna dive into my notebook for a while and then jump back on the computer and finish up the layout for exporting it. Okay, so it's now 
the next day and um, where I ended the video yesterday I basically just done the basic framework of the website and getting it all organized ready to export from Webflow and upload to GitHub pages but uh, yeah it's the next day because I just got caught up doing other stuff last night um, yeah and didn't have time to finish the video but we're gonna finish it now so I'm gonna jump on the computer and I'm gonna make it more like a tutorial style so you guys can follow me along if you have a Webflow account or if not you can still follow along and then see if you learn anything new but um, yeah jump into the computer now and get into the uh, github side of things now so here is the site as it stands now in webflow and as you can see it's very sort of like basic and simple and at the moment it's just the placeholder images and we can add those in later but i don't want to focus too much on the design side of things because this is going to be more about just uh, how to use webflow as a development tool. But anyway, so once you've got your site ready, however you want to design it, you just click here where it has these two um, greater than and less than signs, and you go to the export code uh, thing here, and then all we have to do is go prepare full zip and download the full zip, and that's gonna go into our downloads. And the next thing that you have to do is, in order for this to work properly, you have to have a GitHub account. And basically, if you've never heard of GitHub before, this video is not going to cover uh, GitHub in detail, but if that's something you guys would be interested in, I can teach you what I know, which is just really the basics. Um, but you should create an account, and there's lots of uh, really good tutorials already um, online about how to get started using GitHub and things like that. But it's basically just a way to uh, manage your kind of different versions of your sites and be able to store them all in one place and download them when you need them and things like that. But it's primarily a version control community, I guess you can say. But once you've set up an account, you'll have a screen like this. Um, and you just go up here to create new, and we have to create something called a new repository. Um, and we are going to be uploading it to something called GitHub Pages, which is basically with every GitHub account, you get basically a free website that uh, allows you to upload your website or whatever. I'm going to just change this to github.io, and that's your URL there. Um, description that's going to be development portfolio. It's going to be public. We're going to add a README. Um, we don't need to do anything with this git ignore. Basically, all the git ignore file is is if there's anything you want to up not upload, you would uh, include it in that git ignore uh, file. And then license will just leave for none at the moment, and we'll go create a repository. But like I said, make sure you do check out this as a reference. I'll put a link in the uh, description, and yeah, then you guys can follow it uh, in. More detail. First thing you want to do is open your terminal, and I'm using something called iTerm, which is just uh, basically a nicer version than the default terminal. But whatever you're using, a Windows or a Mac machine, you'll have a terminal, or in Windows, it's the command prompt. And don't be alarmed that we're going to be using the terminal, it's not scary, you just have to memorize the commands and uh, the order that they're supposed to go in, and you can also just reference them or write them down so that you have them for the future as well. But basically, we're just going to go cd, which stands for change directory, and we're going to drag across this website's folder or whatever uh, folder you want the project to be in, and just go enter. And as you can see now, we're in this website's folder here. Uh, and what we want to do is type in our first git command, which is git clone. And then if we go back over to our GitHub account, click on this, and then copy that to our clipboard. And then go over here and just paste it in, git clone, and press enter. And as you can see, it's cloning into that github.io. And you can see that our folder is now here. And there's nothing in the folder at the moment. But just we're going to go change directory one more time into that folder to make sure we're inside that folder. And if you want to see what's inside there, just type ls, and that's just to list everything that's in that directory. OK. So after you've done that um, and got GitHub installed and everything like that, we're going to go back to what we just downloaded, which is this development portfolio that we exported from Webflow to our downloads folder. And that's just a zip file. So we're going to unzip that. We can delete this zip file. And we're just going to copy all of this, just to make sure it's in the kind of root directory of our thing. OK, so now, as you can see, what Webflow gives you is just your index index.html, a CSS folder uh, with a few sort of CSS requirements uh, that Webflow needs, and a JavaScript folder as well. So it's not, not nothing too scary or complicated. It's very easy to work with. And what we do, just drag it over, open it in your code editor, like that. 
and then we can see the code that Webflow has given us. Um, so if we go to our index, as you can see, everything's here, very nicely coded and organized, and it's very clean and easy, and that's why Webflow is such a great tool, even if you're just prototyping or a front-end developer um, and wanting to try out a new idea very quickly, um, it will just export really uh, clean code with all your classes that you've added and stuff like that, which is just really, really great to quickly prototype ideas and things like that. As you can see at the moment, uh, we have quite a lot of links to different files and stuff like that, and there's ways that we're using different tools and techniques that we can combine it into one smaller file, which will increase the load speed, and we can do the same with the uh, JavaScript at the bottom here. You know, there's this Webflow dot Java and things like that. And we can basically just make everything a bit more condensed and uh, faster to load. But in the meantime, that's all you have to worry about. You don't have to worry about the code now. If you've never touched any code or anything like that, you don't really have to uh, understand it at the moment. Now, what we want to do is upload it to our GitHub URL here that we have uh, set up from our GitHub pages. So in order to do that, you just simply type in git uh, dash maybe a dash dash a there we go, so it's a dash dash a, um, yeah, see, I don't know the commands all that well either. And that's just going to add all our files ready to be uploaded to the repository that we created, so basically uploaded. Um, so you type in that git add dash dash a, and then you want to go git commit dash m, which is just stands for uh, commit with a message, um, which is going to say my first commit. You can type in whatever you want and just make sure you close off the brackets and then press enter again and as you can see it says my first commit seven files changed and 3000 whatever insertions in, in insertions sorry <laughs> and that's just saying all the files that have been uploaded or ready to upload uh, and then all we have to do to finalize it is just so git push and that's going to add everything so take a minute and as you can see it's just writing all the objects to our repository and that's all the commands you really have to know at the moment uh, to get this code uploaded to your GitHub pages. So if we go over back to the repository here, this make sure you're in the correct one, kirglover.github.io, that's okay. If we go refresh, as you can see, everything here has been uploaded from our computer onto the repository. As you can see, we type in the URL here, and we have our Webflow site live on our GitHub pages. And that's all looking very nice, exactly how we coded it up in Webflow. So that's all there is to it, and that's all I'm going to start with in this very first video, is just simply how to mock up a site in Webflow, use it more as a development or prototyping tool, download the code, and then upload it to your GitHub pages or any other kind of URL or, or server that you have available on your uh, computer. So that's it really for this video, and later, in going into the next episode, what we're going to do is take this code here in this portfolio that we've started and begin optimizing it using some uh, JavaScript kind of task runners and other tools to basically make our site uh, a bit more optimized and a bit more uh, faster to work with. So that's it for this very first episode of this new video series and I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. And basically it just goes to show that Webflow is equally as powerful as an excellent design tool to expand your offerings as a designer, but it can also be a really good tool for the front end development side of things, you know, just taking a site, quickly prototyping a new idea, downloading it, either inserting the code into an existing website or just building a whole site or a framework for a site very very quickly and you know you could do it 10 times the speed than you could sitting writing code in my opinion anyway but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new and if you have any questions or concern or didn't really get anything please uh, check the links that I'll provide in the description and you can also ask me in the comments and I'll make sure to reply but yeah please if you would like to subscribe or like the video and if you like the series and looking forward to more episodes like this please do let me know because I want to be creating what you guys want to see but until next time guys i hope you have a really good uh, next few days or a good weekend in whatever you're doing and i really look forward to seeing you in the next video